now. And I think um, what's happening now is like, it's, it's so much, so many people are putting out content. So many people are doing art. So many people are photographers want to make movies, visual arts and things of that nature. But it's almost similar to what we're saying about the algorithm, but there's also this sense of not really being honest with who you are though. Mm, You know, you're making stuff just to make stuff versus making stuff that is you, you know? So I've learned that the more you lean into you, the further you actually will go, but you got to be willing to take the risks, deal Mm -hmm. with the silence, deal with the, you won't be able to look at someone and say, okay, that's how they doing it. So I can do it. Like, like you're going to really be in your in a, kind of like a league of your own. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. um, and it's, it's, it's very, it's scary. It is. You are now tuned in to the dopest podcast. What's been better with Sly and Lori sit and chop game. So buckle up your seatbelts and open up your mind. What's been better is about to go live. This is episode 26 of What's Been Better. This week, we're talking about fighting through obstacles, what it truly means to be yourself, and manifesting your dreams into reality. If you've been here before, you know we cuss. And if you're new here, please get used to how we emphasize. Today, we're joined by photographer Kamal X. He brings us his new book, Black Astronaut, which will be released October 24th, 2023. Welcome. Hey. Hey. hey, I'm so happy to be here. So thankful for you guys to allow me to be here and join in on your amazing vibe that you guys are creating. It's very inspiring. And I'm just really hoping I can just like fit into all the beautiful stuff you guys are already creating, you know? Thank oh, no, you. that's awesome. That's awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Well, so you want to <laughs> share with him how we how we do this? He's heard the show. He knows how this goes. Okay. Um, mm-hmm. Yes, okay. ma'am. So then we'll start with you, Kamal, and I'll mm-hmm. ask you what's been better. It could be anything that's better in your life, today, yesterday, but anything that's better. Okay. So, yeah, for the past, I think, five months, mm-hmm. I've been, five months ago, I made a decision to, like, you know, start over and start fresh and just go back into myself and really just rebuild the world that made sense to me. You know, mm, I think I love that. it's important, you know, co-creating is very important and taking chances and, you know, sometimes those things don't work out. So mm-hmm. for me, you know, getting back to what made sense to me has been really, really great because I've mm-hmm. missed so many things that just are important to me. And it's been mm-hmm. a very great learning experience just, you know, getting things back in place. And even with my artistry, with my communication with friends, with where I spend time more of me time you know like so it's been very healing and um inspiring honestly like I'm really proud of myself like considering where I was a year ago and to be able to pick it back up and continue to grow continue to promote the 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 book and keep focus and all those great things and I'm just really Mm -hmm. happy and it's been better yeah for sure that's that's lovely yeah. Ooh, I got, you know, I would have some questions, some follow-up questions for you. I knew we, it. We're going to keep going. <laughs> I Sylvia, knew it. what's been better with you? Uh, a lot of things have been better. I don't know if y'all can see my shirt. I have on a Tuskegee shirt today. Thrasher. Uh, no. Thrasher okay. is the hall that made me. Okay. Um, this is the hall where I got my education degree. And I'm mm-hmm. holding space for Tuskegee today because there was a shooting on campus. Oh, Something boy. that is, you know... It's not the Tuskegee way. Mm-hmm. It is not the Tuskegee experience. Mm. Mm. And I'm, I feel like things are better because the new president gave the students off school on Monday mm. in light of what was happening. And I, I feel like that is better because I hadn't seen a president respond like that mm-hmm. at our school. Mm-hmm. So... Did someone get killed? No, nobody was killed. Um, There were students that were hurt. There were people Mm -hmm. that were hurt. Mm -hmm. Um, But I'm holding space for them because I know what that experience, I know what the Tuskegee experience is. Mm -hmm. And I know what it can be. And um, I want better for them. And I know that better is possible for them. Mm -hmm. So the better for me is that they have people in place now who are like, how do we heal? How do we move mm-hmm. forward? What do we do? Mm-hmm. And making sure 
that the Tus the Tuskegee experience is one that is better. Mm -hmm. so. That's awesome. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, my guard daughter um, just called us yesterday, called me and Tommy yesterday to tell us that she was accepted to Tuskegee. Yay. So we're all excited and it, you know, just really elated for her. That's um, good. Yeah. So what's been better for you, Lori? Um, well, I'm getting ready to go to Mexico for yes. uh, my destination wedding. Oh, and uh, thank you. Yeah, I was, it, I was, it, uh, I've been excited. I was very nervous for some reason. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why you are already married. I know, but it's, um, you know, going away and making sure that all the things are done, mm -hmm. you know, and, and all the things to take with me. Right. And right. so I'm getting down to the wire on that. And so um, what's been better is that I'm overcoming some of that anxiety about it and just okay. releasing and getting ready to just really enjoy myself. Right. Mm -hmm. um, we had a shower on the weekend. It was just beautiful to see all the people mm -hmm. and to share any experiences. And that was another thing that I don't know, some some things that I guess revolve me doing for others. It's a natural for me. Mm -hmm. People doing for me. It's anxiety producing for some reason. You did I, seem I, like very nervous. I will mm -hmm. say Saturday, you seem like at first you were kind of deer in the headlights of like, all oh, these people are going to stand up and say something. <laughs> but it felt good. Yes, I got teary, y'all. You know, I'm a crier. Mm -hmm. um, I, it hit me like a ton of bricks. I was not expecting that. Mm -hmm. I was not expecting mm -hmm. that. But it was beautiful to be in that space. Mm -hmm. And again, with you being intentional, it was so intentional, and I loved every second of it. But yeah. yes, you being nervous, I was like, girl, just take so this love. Right. So that's what uh, another thing, just learning how to accept love, you mm -hmm. know? So, so yeah. We we okay. are really excited, though, Kamal, that you're here. Yes. We've been kind of uh, fanning, you know, we're like uh, being fans from the outside, you know, looking oh, at your man. work and looking at your website and stuff like yes. that. Wow. So Thank you so much. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much. So tell um, us how we got here. How we know that you found us on Instagram and anybody can find us on Instagram, YouTube, mm -hmm, TikTok, mm -hmm. any of the places. But I remember you saying it was kind of difficult for you to find us. Yeah, it's actually so trying to find content that's, you know, that I connect with, that's more real, based on reality, that's based on things that are really nourishing and healing and mm -hmm. not a clickbaity way, you know, mm -hmm. just the truth and honesty. And, you know, it, it was hard to find. I saw a lot of podcasts that were, you know, not to judge anyone, but more so like, I don't want to say ignorant, but just into stuff that i'm not into let's put it like that like if i came on your show it would i don't know what we would talk about you know like oh, okay. it was just a lot of stuff that's like more into like just joking around catting mm -hmm. around talking about what's going on in the world but not really even going deeper into what it might mean so i was having um difficulty so when i did find you know like you guys it was like oh thank god like something i can just really connect with something that i feel like going into that space would be a, a growing experience versus mm -hmm. something where it might feel like I'm out of place mm -hmm. and okay. I might not know how to. Um, so, I, yeah, we talked about that before. Like, it was very interesting that it is more difficult to find substantive, yeah. like, things. And I think that's the same thing with most things with social media. It's mm -hmm. like finding things that are real is, like, mm -hmm. not yeah. what seems to be promoted most times. Right. Yeah. Right. That is so deep. And, and that's some of the things that Sylvia and I talk about on a regular and we found ourselves kind of being discouraged initially, but mm -hmm. some way we were like, no, we got to push forward because mm -hmm. it's not the quantity, it's mm -hmm. the quality. Yeah, and we right. had to keep going back to the quality. We, right. we have something to offer and, right. and it's easy, easy to get caught up in the algorithm of things mm -hmm. and to feel like, well, nobody's seeing us. And no, but the people who need to see us and who right. need to find us, your mm -hmm. confirmation that's awesome so yeah. yep and look um, what a here. blessing i'm here today and i'm yes. so this yeah. is amazing like i am you see how nervous i was like i you know like <laughs> this is really <laughs> no like, need cool. to be nervous with us um, ever anybody right. that comes and sits in that third spot there's no need to ever be nervous this is just a conversation among mm -hmm. friends and new mm -hmm. friends so i yep. appreciate that i appreciate but that I, speaking of the algorithm you have an extremely powerful image 
mm. of an, an astronaut. And, and we're going to get to why it's called Black Astronaut because I, I love the story of it. But there's an image of, of someone standing next to a sign and that sign says, don't be a slave to the algorithm. Mm -hmm. I mean, if that is not a juxtaposition of like where we are mm -hmm. as a people today mm -hmm. and, and even being in this space and knowing mm -hmm. like the months and months of fighting all the mm -hmm. different algorithms, because mm -hmm. when I tell y'all doing this work is a joy but it is not easy. Mm -hmm. And the biggest hurdle of it is climbing over which algorithm I, am I going to fight today? Mm -hmm. And not getting discouraged and not constantly being like, I, I, don't, I don't know what to do. I don't mm -hmm. want to do this anymore. It's too mm -hmm. difficult. No one's yeah. hearing us. No one's seeing us. You know, nothing. Knowing, yes, it's substantive. It's it's something that is needed. It's I think it's just a, such a good idea to hear people talk and debunk the theories around therapy and mm -hmm. to heal in real time to um be guided in that as well so mm -hmm. yeah I, I just thank you for these images because awesome. they are needed as well yeah oh, thank powerful you so images like like not being a slave to the algorithm how the girl was holding her head back and Mm -hmm. What was that on the on the floor though? Was that somebody's yeah, head? Yeah, see, there's there's like a, okay, so there's a lot in that photo. So that's just like a um, astronaut helmet. Okay, so okay. that's just an astronaut helmet. But did you also notice that there's cell phones around yes. the rim ah. with X's on them? Okay, yeah, there's little are you cell okay phones. with me putting that image yeah. up here for everyone oh, to 100%. see? Oh, hundred percent. Go ahead. Yeah. Okay, 100%. so I'll put that image here for mm -hmm. everyone to see. Mm -hmm. But yeah, yeah. definitely. Like, yeah, that was, um, oof. yeah, that, and you know, the inspiration behind just in terms of before I even got to that point was like, cause I I'm a documentary photographer. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. most of my stuff, it's based on reality. I'm not really like warping anything. I'm showing you what I see, you know, mm -hmm. I'm creating images, but I'm mm -hmm. not telling, Hey, do this. And mm -hmm. now I'm gonna take the photo. It's based yeah. on real life and right. how I see the world. But, um, I also there's still more in me though. Like mm -hmm. I still want to have things to say. And mm -hmm. like, I took a chance that most um, documentary photographers don't do. They normally mm -hmm. don't put, you know, go beyond that. Mm -hmm. Most times they just, they report and here you go. Right. Um, and they keep them out of it. Just look at my photography, read into it as much as you can. But I felt like that was for me personally, that was mm -hmm. limiting. I was like, okay. I feel like I have way more that I want to say. Mm -hmm. And from what I was experiencing, during 2020, during Black Lives Matter, doing the presidential stuff, during the women's rights stuff that's still going on, like seeing all these things, I was just like, whoa, like mm -hmm. there's so much programming going on. Yes. Right. And it's like, and I'm seeing so many sides of it. That was the thing I knew was unique to my experience. Most of us were locked up. Most of us were locked in a house, but most of us were, um, or just not traveling across America to see mm -hmm. different sides of what was going on. So it just taught me stuff that I didn't, I wasn't expecting of how much programming has affected us as a humanity mm -hmm. and how many people are following things blindly because this is mm -hmm. what it says you're supposed to say, you're right. supposed to think, you're supposed to be outraged about this. And I'm looking at it like, how come there's no gray area? Why is everything so this or that, mm -hmm. this or that? Like, it's like, if you're thinking for yourself, you're going to find yourself in gray areas from time mm -hmm. to time. Mm -hmm. And um, that's what inspired me to come up with um, that slogan, don't be a slave to the algorithm. And when I took the photo, I didn't think it was going to be, I didn't know what it would be. But then mm -hmm. as time went by, I was like, yo, this is actually yeah. very fitting to mm -hmm. everything that I want this book really to stand for mm -hmm. in terms of moving forward, you know, because right. the past is important and realizing that's a big part of the book too just reporting what i saw and you and giving people an opportunity to reflect on those times in a way that i think is very honest um mm -hmm. but also at the same time inspiring people to reflect inspiring people to look about how this reflects to you and what are you going to do as you move forward in your life that's my mm -hmm. my hope um yeah, yeah. Okay. okay yeah so so come out i have a couple questions for you like how did you one get started but before i even say that kamal x is such a powerful name right 
it, it's number one. Thank it's you. it's Kamal your actual name, and and if so, where did X come from? Awesome question. That that gave me goosebumps. Um, Kamal is my real name. That was I was born with that name. Um, my father really liked that name a lot. Like he always he was a Muslim, so he he just really always loved the meaning of it is perfection. Mm-hmm. And he just, it was just one of the names he always knew. And he was like, if I have a son, I want him to have that name. And okay. I used to not like it, believe it or not, growing up in America. But mm-hmm. I, now uh-huh. I love it, obviously. I, I okay. love my name a lot mm-hmm. and the meaning. X is not my last name. That is more of a creative decision based on my admiration for Malcolm X. Okay. Like, th- he's my, he, he's one of my, like, number one people that I look up up to and inspires me and Mm -hmm. yeah so any and I've always loved Malcolm X and I think I was just at a point where my career was starting to kind of like go somewhere in art and I was Mm -hmm. like let's just switch it up a bit you know let's do something a little bit different you know and um it just kind of worked and I just really love it so that's where the the name comes from and in terms of getting started um it happened kind of randomly because I didn't plan to be a photographer um Mm -hmm. it was and I'm sure we'll talk about this but I had a a moment you know like about 20 I'm 37 now so maybe 26 or 27 my best friend uh transitioned from uh, colon cancer Mm. and when that happened it was something that was very unexpected like even Mm -hmm. when he was going through you know, chemo and everything, because we had so little information and we're just thinking the best, we're just thinking, oh, you're going to get through it. You're going to be mm-hmm. fine. You know, and when it, when he actually passed away, it was like, wait, what? Mm-hmm. None of us were prepared for it. It was such a, a big shock in so many ways, and especially being that young. And I remember at that point, I was a life coach and I was a uh, personal a phys- fitness trainer. And I knew I had to throw everything away. Like I knew I had nothing to give to anyone. I barely had anything to give to myself. Mm -hmm. Similar to what we talked about early in this episode where I said, like, I just need to get back to me. Mm -hmm. And I just, and at that point I didn't know what me was, you know? So it was like, I need to find myself. And one thing that he loved about me was my freedom. He looked at me, he was claustrophobic as random as that is. Like he wouldn't Mm -hmm. get on planes. He wouldn't get on elevators. So for me at that point, I already lived in Atlanta before I lived in LA and I was from New Jersey. So he was like, yo, I can't believe how you do it. This was so inspiring to him, you yeah. know? And so when he transitioned, I just thought about what can I do that he loved about me that I can just take it times 10. Heck so yeah. I was like, I'm going to go traveling, backpacking, like to some crazy place like Thailand. And, and I knew no one that has been a backpacker. This is like completely out of my comfort zone. I did stuff mm-hmm. in America. I went to islands before, but not roughing it in Cambodia and all that stuff Mm -hmm. so that was brand new no one from my family tree was like that this was just a completely this is between me and my brother and my mindset was I wanted to travel and I wanted to travel with him so I was like I want you to see this with me yeah and that journey went from one trip that was like 40 days I did Cambodia Laos and Thailand for 40 days okay and that blossomed into traveling the world for five years. Look and at I that. ended up going to like over at that time, over 40 countries. Okay. And Ooh. while I was doing it, you know, I'm meeting so many amazing people. My life is shifting. I'm finding peace and forgiveness and all that dealing with mm-hmm. grief. And I met so many cool like photographers and they would always look at me crazy. Like, what do you shoot with? And I'm like, shoot with, I didn't even know what that meant. <laughs> and I had an iPhone 4S and it was right. looking at me like, yo, what are you doing? Like you're in Iguazu Falls in Brazil or something like that. You're seeing a, a volcano erupt and you're using an iPhone. So mm. I immediately yeah. um, purchased a DSLR, which was a Nikon 3300D or something like that. Mm-hmm. And a 3500D. I understand. You, you know the vibe. This is an amazing I camera. It. I always, I always uh, suggest <laughs> yeah. people to get that camera. Um, Pretty wow. much. Yeah. And it. And it went from just taking photos and just doing it for like, cause I'm going to beautiful places and I want to mm-hmm. share this online to like mm-hmm. people coming to me like, yo, you actually might be an artist. Like I remember one friend of mine, she went and she came to my home and she saw like photos up the way I set it up. She's like, yo, you're an artist. I was like, well, I didn't look at it that way. And for mm-hmm. some reason I just was like, all right, let me, let me push it. Let's see what happens if I really go. 
and it just I got addicted not addicted but like I got very inspired yeah by yeah. the process of looking at this as like a skill yeah. not just something to do for fun mm -hmm. and okay. it just like it it rolled into where it is today you know mm -hmm. all right that's, that's a, yeah oh my goodness that's so exciting mm -hmm. now yeah so imagine that your friend right mm -hmm. could tell you that he was so excited about what you've done right like what difference would that make for you well it's kind of what's been my mantra to be honest mm -hmm. with you in mm -hmm. my mind all everything i do even this book black astronaut i had another book called a quest supreme i made a book out of that and that was my first book i did that i self-published that one and mm -hmm. that did one did really really well and even the first page is a dedication to him mm -hmm. you know okay. this book black astronaut mm -hmm. um the concept meaning like more about you going into your unknown being not afraid standing yeah. strong in your truth going into environments that don't make sense to you that you don't belong in like think about what an astronaut is when they go to the moon or something yeah. like that everything mm -hmm. around them is like you don't belong here yeah that's what it felt right. like and i and i'm using that as a example to hopefully inspire others and he was my first black astronaut wow. you know so we're actually doing an event called the Black Astronaut Experience on November 11th, which we're going to be memorializing him because it's been 10 okay. years since he transitioned. So mm, everything wow. I'm doing is really rooted in that friendship and, and me having those talks with him. And in my heart, I know he's like, I'm, I'm happy for you. Thank mm -hmm. you. Like, Good. like even reconnecting with his sister and mm -hmm. doing we did a photo shoot the other day. She's in music. And she's going to be a part of my next book that I'm doing. So nice. it's like, okay. there's nice. this synergy going on. Yeah, and it, you it helps me with peace. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It helps well, me with my peace. I, I hope you keep us abreast, like keep us in touch. We want to stay connected with you. Oh, for sure. I definitely yeah. want to. Yeah, this is one of the things that I, I love about creativity, too. It, it builds bridges, you know. It, mm -hmm. it opens doors. And, you know, to be honest with you guys, like, the, the bigger reason that I got into art was because I felt like I needed to find a talent to open doors that that just me being me like I I, I felt like it would open new doors literally yes. like I was like if I get good at this like I can start speaking I can start mm -hmm. like getting in galleries I can meet mm -hmm. people that are doing different types of things in music and fashion like it's like it's a key you know mm -hmm. it's a key mm -hmm. if we get good at it so yeah you know that you what you're saying is exactly what I hope to happen. Mm -hmm. Like build these connections and just that. that's so huge. Yeah. Well, tell me what have you noticed since you've been doing this? You said you wanted to open doors. What have mm. you noticed since you've been doing this? Um, great question. I, I would say you. Oh man, it, the the landscape has seemed to change. Like I okay because I'm really into the the OGs and like learning from people before me mm -hmm. Eli Reed mm -hmm. who was one of my favorite photographers he's one of like arguably one of the best photographers ever and I got to get pretty close with him uh, over the year just having long conversations with him giving wow. me information about his struggle what versus now and I think um what's happening now is like it's it's so much so many people are putting out content so many people are doing art so many people are photographers want to make movies visual arts and things of that nature but it's almost similar to what we're saying about the algorithm but there's also this sense of not really being honest with who you are though mm, you know you're yeah. making stuff just to make stuff versus making stuff that is you you know yeah. so i've learned that the more you lean into you the further you actually will go but you got to be willing to take the risks to deal mm -hmm. with the silence deal with the you won't be able to look at someone and say okay that's how they doing it so i can do it like like you're gonna really be in your you know, kind of like a league of your own mm -hmm. and yeah. um and it's 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 very it's scary it is um yeah. it really is but i've learned that the more you lean into it like and if you push through whatever that is and you get to the point of confidence when you really believe in your work i find that it does open doors that you will be it, it's unbelievable like mm -hmm. it, and you'll go whoa like y'all didn't yeah. believe in me but I they believe in me you know what i mean like the right. people that really right. on that other level mm -hmm. you know so it's mm -hmm. like always having your vision always see like where you're really trying to go and don't mm -hmm. get caught up with everyone 
liking your stuff. Yes. Like, just because all your friends are like, oh, this is amazing, and they giving you 50,000 likes, that doesn't mean that's going to open up a door. Right. You know, that can just have you comfortable with your friends. Or or, Or the other way. If your friends don't say anything, Mm -hmm. they they literally have, you have no idea, you have no feedback. You still, I always feel like leaning into yourself makes you lean Mm. forward, which makes you Mm. go forward. You're going to feel like you're falling every time, but you put your foot out to move forward. And I feel like when we start leaning into everyone else's thing or paying Mm -hmm. attention to the algorithm so hard, you get frozen. Mm. You get stuck. You do. You glitch, Mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. But that leaning forward, it might look like a stumble, but it is forward movement when you lean into yourself. That's, exactly. that, yes, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah. So, have you got any questions? Because I could keep, I can keep going. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, I want to get to the heart of it's 2020. Mm-hmm. Everything is happening. The the mm-hmm. the pandemic is happening. George Floyd then happens. Ahmaud Arbery mm-hmm. happens, but we don't find out about it until later. Mm-hmm. Breonna mm-hmm. Taylor happens, but we don't find out about it until later. <laughs> We all stand in line forever to vote and then nonsense happens and nonsense happens and nonsense happens. As a documentary photographer, what was your moment of something is happening and I better get it from this angle, not that angle? Oh, um, it started before, as soon as, well, because I think when Amard Arbery, when his situation happened, Right. Mm -hmm. I think there was there was riots and protesting in the streets. I Mm -hmm. believe like I remember and I remember at that point I was, you know, the pandemic just kind of started and I was kind of like, and then I was in Oakland and I wasn't there. So I was like, I don't think anyone's outside here. I don't know if there's enough reason to go outside to to document what's going on. Mm -hmm. But I remember the photos that I did see. And mm-hmm. I did feel like a little bit it was a missed opportunity because I did see because I, lo- I was living in Oakland. Oakland doesn't play. They they really outside. No. In mm-hmm. And um, I, it was a missed opportunity to be a part of that. And um, I remember, again, the photos looked very sensational, like to the point where right. no offense to my white brothers and sisters or people from different you know, walks of life, but it felt like this was someone that didn't understand mm-hmm. the cry. Mm-hmm. It felt mm-hmm. like, oh, look at that. Or and similar to where I talk about the algorithm or this is what would get me a bunch of views Mm -hmm. versus Mm -hmm. getting the real story. And I was like, nah, that ain't do. I know I don't shoot like that. Like I I just like, they don't get it. I just know. And so Mm -hmm. when George Floyd happened, it was like, and I remember everything in my heart, like for all of us, it was like a moment that we'll never, we can't even put that into words what that felt like. And I Mm -hmm. knew at that point, I was going to risk my life and go outside and take as, do as much as I could because when I saw that man's life go that way, it was like, there's no way I could sit in the house. There's no mm-hmm. way I can't do something. And right. mm-hmm. for many people, you might not have art as your vehicle. You might do something where you can't just uh, like be a part of that in a way that you feel is meaningful. Mm-hmm. And I knew like because of the life I chose, I'm like, this is what you're supposed to do. Like, this is your time like mm-hmm. show up and that's exactly what yeah. i did and um yeah that was the mentality and i was like i wanted to get the honesty that was going on outside like the the i don't want to say the mm-hmm. beauty but just the voice behind the cry and in a lot of my photos mm-hmm. yeah. i feel like that's what i'm going for i'm not just going for anger and anger and anger and anger right. it's like there's so much more to us there's so much more to what we're fighting for and mm-hmm. There was so much more going on. That's mm-hmm. the other part. Yeah. Like once you're actually there and you're witnessing, it's like, oh, wait a minute. This is nothing like what CNN said. This is nothing no. like what my right. Instagram said. I always, I always yeah. talk about that. The CNN version of things is not reality. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, I think that because I, I too wanted to be a documentary photographer forever. I mean, Gordon Parks was just like that guy for me. Mm-hmm. And there are so many women photographers that were do- documentary photographers that I'm like, okay, I could just pick up this camera and follow someone. I didn't know Mm -hmm. who it was. Was it going to be a musician? Was it going to be some other type of artist? I always knew I wanted to follow someone that was turning the corner in a Mm -hmm. different field. Mm -hmm. And But I knew, same kind of feeling. The feeling that you get when you're watching a CNN and you see 
the police cars are burning and they're like, all of Atlanta's on fire. And it's like, right. I live right. in Atlanta. It's right. not all on fire. Mm, it's yeah. just not, you know, right. so I, I, I see that. I, I understand that deeply of, I don't want to tell the same story. I don't want to have this sensational story. I'm not doing this for clicks. Mm -hmm. I'm not mm. doing this so that way everyone looks at me. I'm doing this because this story is a part of history that needs to be told. Mm -hmm. So I appreciate you for not wanting to fall into that algorithm, not wanting mm -hmm. to follow the leader of this is the way that we've always done it. This is what all the other books show. This is what all the other right. pictures show. I appreciate right. you for just, just stepping to the side and shooting from a different angle. Mm -hmm. I appreciate that because that's that's a, standing in a different box gives you a different perspective. And so I appreciate mm. that. Thank you so much. I really this has been all right. I'm so thankful. Thank you. Like I, I'm just receiving all this. And because honestly, I've been working really, really hard and just like I've been in tunnel vision for the most part, to be honest. Mm -hmm. I haven't. Mm -hmm. This is the most I've done to really just sit back and look at the book and talk about it from mm -hmm. the artistic standpoint i've been such in the business side of things mm -hmm. okay that this actually is very um welcoming and okay. um therapeutic for me in mm -hmm. a lot of ways because it's mm -hmm. giving me different perspectives i'm as the artist you might like you just you're in it you're not thinking mm -hmm. about how it's affecting other people mm -hmm. you're just no. in your zone you know what i mean yeah. so this yeah. is actually really great feedback yeah okay. um and yeah it's it, there is this pressure and I, and I talk about this too, and this goes into like the way the landscape is and what I hope for people in general, I just want people to not be afraid to be individualistic mm -hmm. um, because there is this pressure to do things. And it's like, there's one photographer, there's a few photographers that I follow that have been a great inspiration. And one of them, his name is escaping me right now. Um, Joel Meyerowitz, actually. Mm -hmm. okay. And he, wa he I watched a documentary of his where he's just explaining photography. He taught the whole game. Like, if you watch that... Okay. Oh, that's you're, awesome. Literally. Like, it's okay. on, like, master class or something like that. He goes so deep into his process. And he's one of the greatest photographers, too. And he would say, like, what are you actually saying? Mm. Like, are you just taking pictures or are you giving us a story? Like, what... Do, and what does that picture say about you? He's like, mm -hmm. the language of photography, once you really get into it, like, we should be able to know who you are from yes, the photo. Yes. If, if you're just showing a photo and just showing us what happened outside, you're not a photographer. You're just copying <laughs> images. You're not... Oh, shit. You're not right. at that point. Yeah, he's, he's raw. He, right. he, 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 you know, like... And... Um, oh, my goodness. That's you awesome. You know, and, it, and, it, and it, again, this is a big part of like yeah when i was like yeah i'm just gonna you know be myself mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. i've my story has always been a story of like growing up not fitting in i've mm. always been yeah. that person i've been popular I, i'm a very good people person but mm -hmm. in terms of like oh straight a's oh mm -hmm. college i'm gonna be a lawyer i'm gonna be a doc like i never fit into that mm -hmm. and it was very difficult for me finding my way mm -hmm. because i felt that pressure to do you know, go to school. Like I got mm -hmm. in a more house. Like I'm mm -hmm. like, yeah, this is, I'm on the way. And I'm like, mm -hmm. but this doesn't feel like me. How mm -hmm. did you find your way then? How did you find you in this whole thing so that you ended up where you are now? I, I think it goes back to, you know, my friend transition. Like I think mm -hmm. it was, cause at that point again, I was life coaching and mm -hmm. I was a trainer and all those, those things that I really care about. Mm -hmm. That wasn't where my ultimate I don't think that was my ultimate destination. I think mm -hmm. that was a piece of the puzzle to get me mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. where I'm at. But yeah, I think when everything kind of really shut down, similar to the pandemic, like mm -hmm. when it was like time to make a decision, like, what are you going to do? You going to stay mm -hmm. in the house or are you going to mm -hmm. step towards mm -hmm. what you say you want, you right. know? Mm -hmm. And, and for me, that first, that moment was finding myself. Mm -hmm. And, and I know because of that level of, I want to say dedication and, and honesty and mm -hmm. just it gave me a a, a a I don't want to say confidence but just a courage to mm -hmm. face that if I can face that mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. and face that and still come out me and still be like adding still like growing still creating loving relationships and friendships and help you know mm -hmm. I'm like I can do there's nothing that you can do to me to stop me from mm -hmm. being me like i don't right. your opinion is so secondary to my story that's and huge. that's something 
Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It sounds but, like um Dion right now. Yes, yes. It sounds oh, exactly yes. like everything <laughs> he's going. But like, I think it's a lot of <laughs> but I think it's a lot of people on that wavelength right mm-hmm. now. And mm-hmm. I think that's why so many of us are noticing it and responding to it and gravitating towards each other for it mm-hmm. because we all understand your opinion of me does not make me you right can't, you didn't make me so you can't break me like we right. all he's like it, it just sounds the same and i feel mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. like i i 100 agree with it because i we're in that same space yeah. we're in that same space one of the things that stuck out to me just now is you're talking about being a life coach, right? Mm. How in the world did you end up being a life coach in your early 20s? Huh. Like, like that's 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 something deep because <laughs> a, a, Sylvia and I, we talk a lot about um, your 20s being your second childhood, right? Mm. Um, there's a lot of things that we missed in our childhood from zero to like 18, 19, and 20 to mm. 30 go through a whole nother phase and sometimes mm-hmm. the young people stumble. I know mm-hmm. I did. I stumbled a lot. And I, I started early on being like, I would say grown because I started our family at 23. And mm-hmm. I felt like I was grown, but I really wasn't so much I didn't right. know. So I'm and being a life coach at 23. Oh, my God. I wouldn't. Have, I would have been like, I don't know nothing. <laughs> you know? nothing. Yeah, that's <laughs> who, real. Who am I life coaching? That's, that's so right. real. So how did that happen for you? Um, So... I have to give you a little bit more context. So when I was, I've had a very, I've had a lot of challenges in life. So, mm-hmm. and one of the the more major challenges I faced was actually in high school. So okay. Okay. my senior year of high school, um, I had an unfortunate accident where, and this is in the book, actually, it's in the first introduction of the book. Okay. It's my forgiveness chapter, actually. And mm-hmm. it, um, I had a, a, a scuffle, a fight with some people, and it was about, four of them and one of me and in this situation i got hit sorry for the graphic i got hit in the head like repeatedly with a car jack and i was like they were trying to kill me Mm. you know and i was supposed to die Mm -hmm. at least have brain damage and i remember waking up under a car it was a lot going on and i remember being in the in the um ambulance and it was freezing cold and i remember this guy he was pleading for me to live like because he was like, yo, stay up, stay up. Do not fall asleep. And at that, I didn't understand what was going on. But now I know he was just making sure I didn't slip away. Mm-hmm. And I remember I was dozing off. I was woozy. But I remember he was his con, his energy was just so like, you need to stay up that I was like, all right, I'm going to stay up, you know, and, <laughs> <laughs> you know, but I believe he saved my life. Yeah, and, wow. you know, so that was. So I remember going back to school after that was over, like I had a fractured skull. I have like, it's a whole thing, you know? Mm-hmm. And thankfully there's something that people don't, I don't have a haircut right now, but I, I have, like, you wouldn't know, you know? Mm-hmm. So okay, I'm thankful for that. Mm-hmm. And even my speech, all this, mm-hmm. like I'm, I'm, you would never know unless I told you. So that's a blessing yes. that I would never stop being thankful for. But it also created a very difficult road of really, trying to figure out what life meant for me Mm. you know that how because at that age i didn't i knew god was real but i didn't know i didn't have a relationship with him Mm. i was 17 going on 18 i didn't know i'm like okay it was like you blessed like it if it would have went to this Mm -hmm. you would have been brain damaged all this Mm -hmm. other stuff you look normal like Mm -hmm. my ear was hanging off it was Mm. a whole it was very uh traumatic Mm. and I really went left. Like I didn't go like, oh, I'm gonna figure it out. Mm. I went as far as you can go into the dark side mm. of like, I want to say just running from the pain mm. with okay. anger, yeah. with not understanding why I'm here, pushing the envelope. Mm-hmm. Like I really don't care about life. Mm-hmm. Like I, at that point, I didn't care about living. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I really, and I was in school of all places. I would come to school high. Like I would mm-hmm. go in class smelling like weed. Mm-hmm. Like okay. that's how far my level of, I don't, I don't care, mm-hmm. you know? So um, that finally reached its core is its final piece of like, oh, like I went to a hard rock bottom of that. It finally like, that ship can only go so long mm-hmm. before you either die or go in jail, like mm-hmm. pretty much. And thankfully, my mom pulled me out. And I remember okay. she came to, at that point, I was at Morgan State in Baltimore. 
And she came one day, it was like three o'clock in the morning. And she just knocked on the door. I, I was living with my girlfriend at the time. So I thought there was some girl coming in there. I was about to get in trouble. And then <laughs> it was my mom and she was like, get your, get your shit. You're coming home. Mm -hmm. wow. And I didn't even fight her. Mm -hmm. I didn't even go, mm -hmm. no, nah, I want to stay. Nah. And I was like, I love college was fun. Mm -hmm. I was crazy, but mm -hmm. it was fun, you know? And I just, I knew I was done. And mm -hmm. I remember from that point, I came back home. I, um, she got me a personal trainer. We started working on my, food, my eating, mm -hmm. you know, and he was another male that was a positive role model. He was like an older gentleman. Mm -hmm. and he was like feeding, giving me information, trying to get me like my mind. Right. I remember I started reading, I started going more into church and things like mm -hmm. TD Jakes and things of that mm -hmm. nature. Like okay. in my life, kind of like I figured it out. I found like through help of people around me, my mom, for sure, reading movies. I just really went into myself. Okay. And I got to a point of like 20, maybe like 24. Like I became a real estate agent. Like I became wow. really successful in that. Like I sold like a, over a million dollars in my first year. You had different lives. <laughs> so like. Whole so, lifetimes. So it's like. <laughs> And then at that point, I was like, I felt so good about myself. Mm -hmm. And I knew that wasn't me either. Like, mm -hmm. I, I knew I could have been a broker, but I was mm -hmm. like, I don't think that's my skill set. I want to help people. Look at that. So I moved to Atlanta with the mm -hmm. idea of, like, I'm going to change the world. I'm going to yeah. figure it out. I didn't know what I would do. Right. Um, but I knew that it was in me to help people. And then right. I, I got life coached. Mm-hmm. Okay. And I love the pro, And that helped me go to another. Because I was just so thirsty for it. Like, I needed to grow. I knew. Yeah. I needed to like figure every, were, all this you stuff out. You were searching out. and mm -hmm. you were looking. And yeah. when mm -hmm. you do that, you do find. How did Morehouse come into this then? So when, so after I left Morgan, um, mm -hmm. when I got my, so I did, the real estate thing was going well. And I kind of said, okay, I'm going to pivot. And I needed a plan. So I was like, okay, I'm going to go back to school. So mm -hmm. I got okay. accepted to Morgan, More, Morehouse. Mm -hmm. So when I moved to Atlanta, I was also in school. Okay. So there wasn't just okay. like, I'm here. I right. like, At least I'll be in school. But I also want right. to figure out yes. like, how I'm going to change the world. And I found a life coach, um, Ona Brown. And she really sh helped shift my life in a way that okay. I would never... And then I wanted to be a coach. I was like, yo, yeah. I, this is, you know, so I don't, I wouldn't say I loved, I think it was more for me though. Mm -hmm. I don't, I, like I coached some clients, but mm -hmm. I, it wasn't, I think it was more about me figuring me out. And yeah. that's why mm -hmm. like when I, I wouldn't, I didn't pursue it afterwards. I, mm -hmm. I just knew like that was more like healing for me. Yeah. I was, okay. Yeah. That's, that's awesome. That is, mm -hmm. that's, I'm, thank you. Huge. I love people who are internal people mm -hmm. it's something about that that is just like what i gravitate towards also of people who take the time to find themselves and like figure themselves out before they go out and put that on anybody else because mm -hmm. i spent so much time doing that so i love to watch other people who have walked that process it's such a mature thing to me that i'm like oh i wish i wish <laughs> But mm -hmm. I'm there now, so I appreciate it even more. T tell us, tell us the concept of the book because we did not get to that part of like mm -hmm. how did you get to the concept of the book mm -hmm. and the title? Uh, yeah. So I, I, I was taking the images and I didn't know what I would do with it. It okay. could have just been a series that I put in a contest and try to win a contest or a competition. I didn't know old oh, book. Cause I didn't mm -hmm. know I just was going. Um, but there was a point where I realized, wait a minute, like, especially when I chose not to just, cause there was a pressure to put a book out immediately. Mm -hmm. And this is goes again, the algorithm. Like there was so many photographers, I think that put out books about that time period, mm -hmm. but they didn't wait. They, they, it was still so much going on in America. Like it's still mm -hmm. going on now. Mm -hmm. Like, still. like, right. Like, especially with like, I think women's rights mm -hmm. and the, some of the the um anti-vax movement the the mm -hmm. vaccine both sides of that i think if i didn't have those parts of the book it wouldn't be what it is what it became mm -hmm. and so mm -hmm. many, I, okay. I think y'all like, just shot too fast you should have waited and that's something i learned from the ogs too they said right. like take your time like most yeah. photography mm -hmm. books take like three to five to ten like ten years if you really mm -hmm. do it well whereas yeah. today's generation is like 
six months, got a book. And it's Hurry like, up. Yeah. you have to, even my, um, one of the publishers I was talking to, they were like, we think it should have came out last year. I'm like, well, interesting. I didn't work with them, but it's like, <laughs> wow, it's I love interesting how you that... answered that instead of getting offended by it. It's like, oh, you think so? Okay, mm-hmm. well. You know, you it's know, your pers- different... perspective. Right. Yeah. You know, right. and again, that's um, why I shared that story with you guys about what happened to me in high school. It's like my mm-hmm. mindset is just completely like you're yeah you are so you're not going to stop me like Mm -hmm. i've dealt with so much there's no Mm -hmm. way i'm gonna let your opinion your ideas of what i need to do because i kept and whenever i follow someone else's ideas it normally doesn't work out for me Mm, normally especially when it's unsolicited like Mm -hmm. i didn't ask you i didn't come to you i didn't you're just a person telling me these things and you don't even know my story you don't know where i it's gonna um, create an obstacle for you for mm-hmm. no reason yeah, yes. at that point. Exactly, and the it just makes things more like, peaceful. The higher power didn't put this out here. <laughs> you that's did what this I'm, by yourself. There we, there <laughs> we go, and that's what I'm saying. You gotta like find your own path. And yeah. um, mm-hmm. so I was thinking, like again, I didn't want to create another civil rights book. Mm-hmm. I've seen so many of them, like okay. you know, America on fire, yeah. America burning, anything that's like oh the rage anything like that i'm like yeah that's kind of what i've seen plenty of books like that no disrespect to those books those are amazing but i'm like how do i put my own spin on this what Mm -hmm. can i do to really show who i am and i was like i I just was like playing with ideas and Mm -hmm. i was like i don't know how i even got to that i might have been listening to a song one day and i think i was with a friend at a bar in new york and we were just talking like chit-chatting and i was like black astronaut okay she was like what I was like, black astronaut. And I kept saying it. She was like, what are you talking about? I was like, it's the name of the book, black astronaut. And it just all came to me and I just saw it so clearly. And then I started like taking the photos and put them in. You'll see in the book, it's like the big bang. Like I I, I realized it was a very, you can use the symbolism of space travel Mm -hmm. and explain a lot of what these various elements Mm -hmm. that were happening, Mm -hmm. were happening to kind of expand your mind and just see it a little differently because i i definitely think you know i, I just want to make sure i'm being honest with who, what i would like mm-hmm. you know what mm-hmm. i would actually drive through so yeah black astronaut kind of came to just make sure i was really leaning into me mm. and not being afraid and i was again that was another surprise where i got a lot of good feedback from publishers and and other artists like yo this is am- versus if i just would have said america 2020 mm-hmm. no offense if someone did that it's kind of like, how it's do we know lazy. who you are, though? Mm-hmm. I don't want to, yeah, you said it. I, you know, like, yeah. I mean, at this point, uh-huh. it's a bit lazy. Because I, and I, I'm saying it's lazy because, not because other people have done it, but because mm-hmm. that's an it's explanatory comma. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's, we don't need an explanatory comma because what, it doesn't need to be explained. Mm-hmm. Right. What is already there does not need to be explained. If you had your right. eyes open, if the lights were still right. on up here and you saw anything any day from March 7th of 2020 to November That's my friend. That's my that's my uh best friend. That was his birthday, March 7th. Oh, okay. wow. That's Whoa, my grandbaby. Yeah. My grandbaby's birthday. That out the air. <laughs> yeah. 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 Out that out the air. <laughs> but if yeah, you, there if you, you go. If you, if you had your eyes open from mm-hmm. I, I see Look at that. I Come love on now. Seven too, <laughs> if you pull if you pull <laughs> any any if you had your eyes open for any of those mm-hmm. days mm-hmm. you a book title of of America 2020 is lazy a concept mm-hmm. of there's a burning car and right. there's a person yelling and <laughs> there are black and white people joining hands walking together we've seen it we've done yeah. it we know it yeah. it's a thing right what else right how right. much more work needs to be done what's not done what didn't mm-hmm. we get done mm-hmm. so and it sounds yeah. like black astronaut is like go deeper go a little mm-hmm. deeper yeah. go further or let me right let me show you something behind this thing mm-hmm. right yeah open your mind to the world around you yep. and don't just accept what they're telling you like exactly. you know it's wow. find your own way like literally like mm-hmm. the, the the concept of going into deep space the mm-hmm. concept of you know it, it it's like the like we're saying the internal journey mm-hmm. it really mm-hmm. it really is a similar in the, in the book cover it's me you know mm-hmm. and it's like the first 
um, chapter is called Finding X, mm. meaning finding your unknown. Right. Okay. Ooh. You know, That's math so it, all day. It, 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 so like it, there's mm -hmm. a lot of symbolism mm -hmm. and uh, a lot of like, again, I was in deep tunnel vision and I think that's what art should be. Yep. Like mm -hmm. you yeah. should like really push yourself. Like one of my biggest inspirations is Prince. Okay. I have okay. to bring him up okay. at all that's times. That's my guy. Because that's, <laughs> that's yeah. my person. Uh, Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, that he is. So yeah. his process and the interviews and mm -hmm. seeing his mastery and just how serious he took things like it's mm -hmm. been such an inspiration. It's mm -hmm. like if that's what he did, like who am I not to at least try yeah. to right. push the envelope and really be something? Like he's Prince is just Prince. Mm -hmm. Like he's yeah. just that, you mm -hmm. know. And it's like these are people that I look up to, yeah. and when I follow people like that, it's like. You know, it, it inspires me to really push myself, right? right. Not, not settle for just like getting notoriety, but really going for something deeper, right? Like really Makes searching, sense. yeah. Okay. Yeah, because the notoriety is going to come within you. So that's mm. the important thing that we need to understand. If we're searching for without, we're never going to find. We mm. have to search from within. So mm. it sounds like that's what oh, you're yeah. doing. Oh yeah, that's that's it. Wow. it's all already in there mm -hmm. like it, it's Everything. not this thing you create and it comes to you like it's all like it, one of the things in photography people do not realize Ooh, i cute. learned this is that you actually see the photos before you take them yes yes you, you see every, them before yes it's never like <laughs> this random oh like sometimes i get lucky but for the most part it's like i already go visualize it's already there what i'm looking for how mm -hmm. i wanted to look it's mm -hmm. already a part and the world just kind of like manifests itself. Mm -hmm. like, yes. you know, and it's like, that's when you, yeah, yeah. it's all in there. Already, so everything you know? happens twice, right? It happens mm -hmm. in your thought process and then it happens in reality. It yep. can't mm -hmm. happen in reality unless you think it first. Mm -hmm. So we nice. definitely need to know that. And, and there you go. You confirm that. Which is, yeah. Yeah. We don't yeah. know each other. <laughs> and it's so <laughs> synchronicity right here. It's yeah. just such synchronicity and it's lovely. It's lovely yeah. to watch this. Wow. Beautiful. I'm yeah, I'm having a great time. Trust, trust me. Okay. Trust okay. me. Let me let me be the producer now for a second. Uh if you have not already, I'm gonna say this in the middle. Like, share, subscribe, do something with this episode, but do not keep it for yourself. You know we love positive reviews and appreciate every single one of them. And uh yeah, let's keep it moving now. So we usually do book recommendations so I, I don't know are mm. you a book recommendation person or are you a tv movie recommendation person oh we'll i take either both. one <laughs> okay well both. can i do a little bit of, of ah okay thank you for that um, okay give me one of each all right Ooh, wow this is ooh, okay, okay here right. let me help you we usually say what are you reading this week or what are you watching this week mm -hmm. so that might help you i would say for movie mm-hmm I would say Into the Wild. Okay. Um, by who's Sean Penn is the director of that. Mm -hmm. Okay. That movie follows a kid. It's based on a true story. He actually went to Emory. Um, and he wanted to like he played the game. He got like grade A, straight A's, like honor student, like did the master's program, but he never wanted to be that. He wanted mm -hmm. to have like the spiritual revolution as he called it. Mm -hmm. Like he wanted okay. to, his dream was to go to Alaska and live in Alaska for a year or something like that. Like mm -hmm. that was what he wanted to do to figure himself out. Um, Cause he had a lot of trauma and things going on growing up in his household. Mm -hmm. So he okay. played the game to make everybody happy, but then he went to himself and I'm not gonna explain the whole story, but like he goes on, he throws everything away cards money everything he has like forty thousand dollars in the account he like he donates it to like some cause okay. and he just starts like hitchhiking across america to like literally get to alaska wow. and it documents the whole and it's based on a true story and i'll, okay. I'll say the rest for it. his name's alexander super tramp is his um name that he came up with what, but that movie what what do you watch it on <laughs> Like what? Um, it's just a movie. It'll be every. I'm not sure if it'll oh, be. Oh, it's everywhere. an actual movie. Okay. Yeah, actual mm -hmm. movie. Okay. And um, it's a really, really, it's it's so much to it, and it that okay. changed my life. That that movie literally, um, I watch that movie all the time. I've been thinking about it recently too, because I okay. like I kind of want to always learn something new when I when I watch it. Okay. Um, when did it come out? Oh, this came out like was it 2020? Maybe like 2000. 
11, 2012, oh, so, maybe. Okay, it's been okay. out for a minute. Okay. Yeah, it's like a Into an older, the Wild. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Into okay. the Wild, Sean Penn. Definitely put that in my phone in a few it's minutes. It's a good one. It's like, <laughs> okay. it's fun, it's real, it's emotional, it's everything. Yeah, like, okay. Like, I'll save you the, the end. Um, book-wise, there is a book I'm actually, like, about to read that I'm really excited about, but I can't think of the name of it. Mm-hmm. Rick Rubin is the... Um, this Rick Rubin's book is something about creativity. He's okay. doing something about artistry. Okay. The, the, it's a circle on the on a, on a front cover of mm-hmm. it. I can't remember the name of it, but Rick Rubin's book. There's so much that's, for what I've read so far, it's been really, really good and just open your eyes to like what it means to be an artist and mm-hmm. being receptive. And Rick Rubin is like the one of the godfathers of hip hop. So like he just really gets into like how he got to that point in terms mm-hmm. of creating you know, okay. some of the greatest songs ever. Okay, So I would awesome. say that book, mm-hmm. but I haven't finished it though. So I don't yeah. know if I should suggest that, but like that's- well, well, Are the, you liking it so far? I am liking okay. it so far, okay. but I don't know if it's going to be like the one that I would say, like I would share with everyone is As a Man Thinketh by James Allen. Lori has recommended that before. Isn't that it awesome? Is the, and it's a short book. <laughs> yeah, that's quick. It? Yeah. That, that's it's quick. so that's powerful. Right to the, it's like, boom. That, that's it. That's all you right. I just say, just read that sit down it won't take a long time but mm-hmm. it gets right to, to the, the point point. and you'll yeah. just be like whoa, whoa right. so that's the book okay. i always tell people yeah, yeah. okay that's, that's awesome. synergy i'm telling you right yeah. Lori, are you going tv movie yeah book? Well, i'm gonna do what both, going I'm gonna do both. okay so mm-hmm. right now I'm, I'm watching the morning show which i i it blew me away to watch okay. that right i'm coming it's, up right behind you okay coming up right <laughs> behind you and it, it just really points out how narcissism is like mm. oh my goodness like women and men being narcissists mm-hmm. and how you deal with it and how Ooh. it can eat you up. It can chew you up and spit you out. And at the same time, there are nice narcissists and there are assholes out there, but at the same time it's there and you have to really know who you are to be mm-hmm. able to handle something like that. Right. Mm-hmm. Okay. And to let you know how the world is, they mm-hmm. are not pulling any punches. It's really real. It's, yeah. it's so real and it's like okay <laughs> I've lived I've lived part of that life and it's just like oh my god I can see myself on television it's just wow um, mm. the book I'm listening to right now because I do a lot of listening to books instead of just reading them um, mm. but it's called Social Intelligence by okay. Daniel Coleman and um, emotional intelligence is something I tout so much because we do not deal with our emotions, especially men. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. But, you know, to be vulnerable and to learn how to be vulnerable. I think sometimes you need to read about it because we're not going to like listen to each other sometimes. Mm-hmm. We might need to listen to someone else to kind of pull us into this space. But social mm-hmm. intelligence is teaching us how to um, understand each other and understand that we matter on a level other than just talking to each other understand each other's Mm. emotions and Mm. being able to um you know relate better so yeah okay yeah okay that's called the morning show Mm -hmm. the morning show Mm -hmm. definitely check it out apple tv oh yeah (laughs) i saw a clip with my girl nicole bahari and i was like why didn't anybody tell me about this show (laughs) so i'm coming right behind you yeah watching that but yeah that's a good one okay (laughs) okay uh my turn all right Mm -hmm. i have two because I'm still kind of immersed in work. Mm-hmm. Um, by the time this comes out, it will two weeks it will pass by the time mm-hmm. this comes out. But um, the 117th commemoration of the 1906 Atlanta Race Massacre mm-hmm. just happened. And I've been doing that work now for, what are we on, eight months. So to see all that come together mm-hmm. and what it all became and bringing people together and holding space for new names that have been added to the list um it just made me want to hug this city a little bit tighter Mm -hmm. and also made me want to reckon with this city a little bit more and so the Mm. book i'm recommending because i just was in the presence of him and and watched him on a new series maurice hobson's the legend of the black mecca Mm. that's Mm. a very good book um takes Atlanta through through all the t- the dips and turns of Atlanta but The Legend of the Black Mecca by Maurice mm. Hapson that's huge um, yeah so that's my book TV show or movie 
I'm gonna say the show that Maurice Hobson is on. Uh, it's called Redefining History. Hmm. And the first episode, the pilot episode, talks about the 1906 Atlanta Race Massacre. Mm -hmm. And it comes out on the first on PBS. And you'll okay. see the basis of everything I've been working on. Yeah. It is and featured in the documentary. Yeah, congratulations to yeah. all um, the work you've done, Sylvia. Like you are, have you've been spearheading some things in the background that mm -hmm. I need to be in the forefront. But I just want to, you know, congratulate you right here, right now, and let you know what you're doing and what you've done means so much. Thank you. Shout out to the team that I work with. Um, I call us the five heartbeats. The five of us is four of the women that I work with, and they are just this powerful entity mm -hmm. and well of knowledge mm -hmm. my goodness i appreciate you Rhonda, halima janice and renee i appreciate you for mm -hmm. all the work that we will continue to do shout out to the center for civil and human rights shout out to emory university um eji just i hope that we can continue to do this work because so much of this story and so many other stories that are American history have not been told in mm -hmm. this type of detail. And in the climate that they are in, that we are in right now, I think it's just even more important. That's so that's huge. That's huge. It's so, so beautiful. I'm yeah. yeah just piggybacking. Yeah. I'm so, I'm just getting to know you, but this, that's so amazing mm -hmm. and, and inspiring and beautiful to witness. And this is the yeah. stuff that really matters. You know, mm -hmm. this is the stuff that, doesn't get the clicks but this is so important and stuff that really no. makes change in people's lives and yeah. informs and gives praise to the ancestors all the good stuff that really right. that right. takes us where we need to really be going mm -hmm. you know yeah. like that's so important yeah witnessing all of this has been so humbling yeah. i mean just so humbling wow. but um all right well we're gonna wrap this up Thank you so much for coming to talk I was with us. Come so on. much fun. I, I know. I know. Wow. I know. I know. Well, uh, tell the people where they can find you and tell everyone when your book is coming out. Yes. All right. Hey, thank you guys for listening in on this. And thank you guys for having me on. Um, again, my name is Kamal X. You can check me out on Instagram. It is I am Kamal X, um, spelled K A M A L with just a regular X. Uh, my book comes out October 24th, but it is currently available for pre-order which actually really does make a huge difference whenever this comes out just but if you go to amazon if you go to my instagram it's on there through my links but if you go to amazon and just put in black astronaut i come up put in kamal x i come up put in black astronaut kamal x i come up so it's a pretty easy find um you'll see a big yellow x and you'll see a picture of me on a cover and any of your support really goes a huge way um there's a lot of blood sweat and tears literally and it's a story that I think is very important. It needs to continue to live on and inspire us to continue to move forward. I really think it's a such a great reflection and opportunity by, you know, being a part of sharing, being seeing that book. It just really means the world to me. And I, everyone that I know that I've seen it has really had a a really good um, experience with it. That's inspiring. So, cool. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching peace that's it for this week's show i'm Lori scott and i'm sylvia johnson and you've been listening to what's been better a big thank you to lagan music inc for providing our music this show is edited and produced by us with a little help from our family and friends we love you all we want to hear what's been better for you to be a guest on the show send us an email to questions at what's been better.com or you can find us on Instagram and TikTok at What's Been Better Podcast. Thanks for listening.